Why does God put the cherubim in front of the tree of life after the fall? Is it because he has rejected us? Not at all. Why then could Adam and Eve not access the tree? Welcome to Answers from an Apostolic Faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Before we dive into why God put cherubim with swords in front of the tree of life, it's important to first begin by understanding the essence of the tree itself. According to church fathers like St. Gregory the Theologian and St. Ephraim the Syrian, the tree of life represents none other than Christ himself. Greatly saddened was the tree of life when it beheld Adam stolen away from it. It sank down into the virgin ground and was hidden to burst forth and reappear on Golgotha. We can also look at it from the perspective where the cross represents the tree and Christ the fruit which hangs from the tree as Christ was hanging from the cross. So if the tree of life is essential to our eternal life, why then were the cherubim stationed with swords to guard it? Does God not want us to eat from it? Of course he does. But not after the fall and not until he redeems us and heals the human condition. When we fell into sin, our humanity was now corrupted and eating from the tree of life at this point will only lead to union with eternal God while being in a state of corruption, which is synonymous to hell. This is eternal condemnation. In fact, that same understanding can be seen when St. Paul underscores the gravity of partaking of the Eucharist unworthily, warning of judgment for those who fail to discern the Lord's body. He says the following, Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Prior to eating from the tree of life, which is offered again to us in the book of Revelations, as we shall see, we have to be first baptized because baptism is a mystery where we share in the death and resurrection of Christ and therefore our soul is renewed and only then we can partake of the tree of life. This is the same reason why those who are new to the faith must be baptized before partaking of the Eucharist. All of this is also mystically hidden within the Old Testament when we read of the Israelites who had to cross the Red Sea first, symbolizing baptism, before partaking of the manna, which is symbolic of the Eucharist. For the Hebrews, the people of God, to be freed from the bondage of Pharaoh, who is the devil, they had to be freed through baptism, through the Red Sea, and be sustained by the manna as they lived their life in the desert, which is a representation of partaking of the Eucharist while we are here on earth. And through this sustenance, we can enter Canaan, the heavenly land. St. Paul confirms this understanding and draws parallels between the Israelites' passage through the Red Sea and baptism, where both signify the restoration of the soul to its pristine state before partaking of the Eucharist. He says this, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food. Now we see that only after baptism can one rightfully partake of the tree of life, for only those who cleanse their robes, their soul, gain access to it, as we see in the book of Revelation. It says the following, Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the gates into the city. So the cherubim were put in front of the tree of the garden to save us from eternal perdition till Christ's salvific work is accomplished and our renewal made possible. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to watch our previous ones by visiting and subscribing to our channel. If you find this content beneficial, share it with your friends. Remember, know your faith, live your faith, and teach your faith.